This short video will introduce you to the features of Sequence Matrix, a Java-based software program for concatenating and formatting genetic data. This video will demonstrate the features of the program operating in an Apple Macintosh environment. However, Sequence Matrix can also be used with Windows, Linux, or any other operating system that supports Java. The menus and commands should be the same no matter what operating system you use. Sequence Matrix comes with three example datasets, and we'll start by opening the folder Sepsidae, which contains Nexus files with sequence data from 13 different markers. I'm going to open one of these files to make a few important points. Sequence Matrix uses taxon names to identify different sequences from the same sample in different Nexus files. Now these taxon names can be species names, as we've used here, or specimen codes, or almost anything else, but it's important that the names be consistent across each of the component Nexus files. This Nexus file adopts the fairly standard practice of using question marks for missing data and dashes for real gaps. However, our alignment program has coded missing data at the beginning and end of each sequence as dashes, but these should be question marks. We could do a search and replace, but this would also encode real gaps as question marks. You'll see in a moment how the program takes care of this potential problem. To automatically concatenate sequence data from different Nexus files, simply select all the files, then drag and drop them into the sequence matrix window. Nexus files can contain a lot of information, so sequence matrix warns you that it only reads the data, character, and codon blocks. Any other blocks that might be present are simply ignored. Next, sequence matrix asks you if you want to recode those leading and trailing gaps, which I pointed out before as question marks. You will usually want to select the Yes to All button. If you select Yes, it will ask you the same question for each Nexus file. Note that it only changes the dashes at the beginning and end of each sequence, not the dashes in the middle, which represent true gaps. Now that all the files are loaded into memory, let me explain the sequence matrix interface. The taxon names are on the left, and the name of each marker or gene, which was the name of the individual Nexus files, is at the top of each of the columns. For every taxon, Sequence Matrix provides the total number of base pairs and the total number of character sets. For each individual sequence, the program displays the number of base pairs, the number of base pairs coded as N, and the number of indels. This latter piece of information can be very useful because it allows you to detect quickly if there are sequences that have indels but shouldn't, like mitochondrial genes. If your data included information about codon position, this is preserved and denoted by the numbers 1, 2, 3 in brackets next to the other information about individual sequences. Now that we've finished concatenating our data file, we can export it by clicking on Export and selecting our format of choice. I'm going to export these data as an interleave Nexus file. So I'll name the file and then select an export location. Now, if we open up that file and scroll to the bottom, we can see that code on positional information was preserved. We notice some tax sets, which will be explained in another video. And finally, the character set information. This will let Sequence Matrix re-split this file into its component files if necessary and will, of course, allow you to apply different evolutionary models to different markers in your analyses. Each gene is exported as three separate sets representing each codon position if it's known. You can therefore include all or only some of those codon positions in your analyses. Let's go back to Sequence Matrix and re-export these same data as a TNT file for parsimony analyses. TNT will only let you import up to 32 character sets. We've got 34, but Sequence Matrix will still allow you to export that many. The extra characters have been put into one large comment, which extends from the top of the file to the start of the data. TNT will ignore this data, but Sequence Matrix will be able to interpret it if you want to reopen the file and re-split it. This video has explained some of the basic functions of Sequence Matrix. To find out more about using this program, 
Watch some of our other videos, which explain how you can use the program to explore your data and highlight potential errors.